Hello everyone, let me start with something that you might not know. When you leave a comment below the video and basically sometimes I can't uh, reply back to you. What happens is YouTube sometimes thinks that uh, your comment is a spam uh, because maybe you placed a link to a website or a link to a video and what YouTube does it, it places in a special folder for me to check and that folder is called comments awaiting approval as you can see there's no way for me to reply back to you so if uh, I missed your comment or did not reply back to you I apologize uh, don't get mad at me uh, I can't do anything about it so now let's go over the questions that you asked me uh, in a Sarega knife videos why won't I post uh, sketches of my knives uh, I will post sketches of the knives that are from the video games or uh, knives that already exist uh, any knives that I come up with that are my idea my design I will not be posting those because um, recently one of my Instagram followers showed me a link uh, of a big-time knife maker he has about 24,000 followers on Instagram and that knife maker used my uh, sketch that I posted on Google Plus and the sketch was from the British infantry soldiers knife and he made a knife for I don't know who it was for, for his buddy or for sale because of that I won't be posting uh, sketches of knives that I came up with my suggestion to you is draw a knife that is uh, from your imagination this way this knife will have uh, more sentimental value to you why do you drill holes in a handle of the knife basically if you don't drill holes the handle part will be heavy and it, it won't balance as you can see the handle side is heavy this was my second knife I made and uh, basically I just made the holes for the, the screws and didn't line up the handle part and once you apply uh, the G10 or any handle material the handle becomes super heavy so it doesn't balance out plus you got a lot of weight to carry that's why I drill the holes in the handle part of the metal now now these two questions are somewhat similar and I'm gonna give you my personal take on them the first question is why do you show people how to make weapons I do not show people how to make weapons but I show people how to make uh, a tool that could be properly used uh, I show people how to make a piece of art or a piece of collectible that could be left for generations to come you know that could be transferred to their kids um, when I used to work as a police officer we had a we all of uh, as a sheriff deputy sheriff we all started out working at the jail and one day we had a, a a guy that got arrested he was brought in to us and what he was arrested for was he tried to kill himself by driving his own car into another car uh, which caused a, a big accident he ended up with just minor scratches nothing happened to him but the car that he hit uh, the lady, the mom, and uh, uh, her daughter or son, I'm not sure, they both ended up in the emergency room. Uh, basically, the guy used his car as a weapon. So, a lot of stuff or a lot of things can be used as a weapon. It, it can be a brick, it could be a, a piece of bar, um, I mean anything. You, whatever comes in your hand could be used as a weapon. Uh, the other question was uh, some well not a question but somebody told me when you sell your knife somebody can use it uh, to kill somebody well let me give you another scenario when a drunk driver gets into a vehicle a car and causes an accident or kills somebody uh, do you think we should go and contact or do a little research and uh, get all the information on all the cars the, the brand model cars that were used in uh, driving under influence or DUIs and 
maybe we should contact all those manufacturers let's say honda acura um i don't know gm ford all the cars that were used in uh drunk driving accidents maybe we should ban those cars huh do you see what i'm trying to say is that just because somebody used a car and killed somebody or used a knife and killed somebody it doesn't mean that you should stop making a knife or cars or anything or guns i mean it just remember this people kill people all right so that's my answer and I, I hope I answered those two questions properly so you could understand that how often do you buy your files I still have all my original files from the very beginning if you use them properly meaning when you file you go forward and then lift up put it down file forward lift up uh, this way the files will last longer if you just go forward and drag them back over the steel you'll ruin them where did you learn how to make knives uh, I just watched YouTube videos and follow people on Instagram watch how they uh, make knives how they form the handles how they how they shape the handles and learn from there and basically do it on your own and you get better with each knife uh, you get better only if you put hundred percent into it and the next knife that you make make it a little bit more difficult than the previous one you made this way uh, your skills will grow how long does it usually take to make a knife for you and is this your uh, full-time job it's not my full-time job it's my hobby uh, it usually takes me about three to four weeks to complete a knife because I have a day job so all the knives are uh, worked on after I come home uh, it takes about like I said three to four weeks to video record the knife while I make it, uh, to make the knife, edit the pictures, uh, edit the video and post it on Instagram. How did it go using the bell grinder instead of using your file jig to do the bevels on a Sarega knife? It, it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. So basically once I got the proper angle of the bevel, I just kept on grinding slowly and it's a good feeling it saves you a lot of time uh, where you don't have to use the filing jig and uh, the grinds come out much nicer now let me show you a video who received the Sarega knife my niece made a gift for her um, uh, future father-in-law and uh, she bought a box an antique box and placed the knife into it and she delivered it to her future father-in-law so take a look so that knife is made for you special. Wow. Oh, that's from awesome. From my uncle. Wow. And it's out of that piece of ironwood that you It's a different one. Okay. But it is ironwood. It is ironwood. And it's all handmade. Wow. That's cool. Oh my god. That is beautiful. High carbon signed. Does he have his name or is that his is that his His like, logo's right here? And yeah. then the, I said, the last name, oh. and then there's actually a video posted for you oh, really? that you get to watch. Yes. Oh, cool! We'll turn on the video. That's cool. Wow! Now I gotta go hunt a deer. <laughs> <laughs> My hand. <laughs> Handmade. There's the oh, sheep. Oh wow! You get scared with it. Yeah. <laughs> He's speechless. <laughs> so it's all yours. All of it? All of it. The box too? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'll give you a hug. You can give one to him. <laughs> I'll give you a big one and you can spread it out as much as you want when you get to him. <laughs> Thank you. It always puts a smile on my face watching people's reaction when they uh, see the knife that was made especially for them for the first time. My wife was recently browsing YouTube videos and she brought up to my attention a video that was recently uploaded. Uh, a person took my Sarega knife and placed it into an um, animated, he made an uh, animated video of it. So check it out and 
I thought it was pretty cool. If you want to see the whole video of it, click right here. If you want to see who received my CS 1.6 knife, click right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care guys.